So, um, it's been a busy couple of weeks, which is why there wasn't a video last week, uh, with other stuff outside of just building the van. And I realised today that today is basically the last full day we've got working on the van before we can go away. And as you can see, it is not finished, and it isn't going to be finished. But we've got to prioritise what we want working before we go away for our first week. Our first week we're on a campsite, so although the toilet and shower would be really nice to have, we just don't need it. There's toilet blocks on site, we probably wouldn't use that at all. So the next bit is the kitchen area. And as you've seen from previous videos, we've been working quite hard to get that sorted. The fridge is in, the drain's in, the gas is in and working. So we're going to focus on getting the water in and we're going to try and do both the hot and the cold water next. If we get time, maybe we'll think about trying to complete some of these overhead cabinets to give us some more storage. But we can always use the garage for storage. We've got some plastic boxes to go in there. So I'm currently underneath the uh, double bed trying to work on the heating system because we are using the Bobble Vans water heater. So what we've got is there's our little two kilowatt diesel heater and it's going to a diverter and this will connect this can separate the hot air between cabin and heating up the hot water which will then exhaust into the shower so we can also heat the shower. I've got a second vent here which we can use for um, heating up the garage area which will be important because if we've got any wet kit in here or the bikes are damp it'll help dry everything out so we don't get damp and it'll also help uh, the bed stay um, dry because of all these ventilation holes the hot air will rise up and through them so I built a little frame up here and bolted the uh, heat exchanger to it here you can see the pipe and then I'm just trying to make a space for the water tank so this is roughly where the water tank is going to fit I need to put a load of insulation around it. I was going to use some of the leftover 25mm PIR just to completely insulate it. So we need to put the heat exchanger pump uh, ports in and they're probably going to go on the bottom. Then we need the hot water feed out and that will go out to the hot water pump. Then I need a cold water feed which is going to have a solenoid valve on it and then I've got a um, another hole to go in which will be for the water full sensor. Uh, once I've got all of that I'll get this in a position where I can get it kind of firmly attached to the van and obviously I've got to stay clear of this hot water pipe make sure I can get access to the top should we need to get into the tank to clean it out so I think we're okay at the minute I mean this pipe is sort of in the way but there's a little bit of flex left on it I do need to just kind of attach these pipes in place and I need to make sure that I can hold these the hot air pipe down and out of the way so that we can clear space to get the cassette out of the toilet. But that's no problem. I might even build a kind of a little plywood tunnel for that to go through just so that it doesn't get crushed by anything falling on it. And then the hot air vent is going to be out of the side of the wall just there. Hopefully you can now see the rest of the frame where uh, sort of the water system is going to be. So I'm going to mount both the hot water, cold water pumps and the accumulators here. And then our external shower point is just going to be on the back of that there. So for the hot water system in the van... The primary heating is actually going to be using a Bobble Vans kit. So we've got a diverter from our uh, diesel heater that puts air through a heat exchanger and you can see the two barbed fittings on there and let me show you what happens to them. Those barbed fittings go to these two hoses and uh, one, one side of it will be via a little circulation pump and so it draws water out of this tank, puts it through the heat exchanger, heats it up and puts it back into the tank. So that gives us a tank of hot water on, and from that we've then got this here feed and it go out to our second pump 
Here we've got the fill point with the solenoid for uh, turn it on and off. And here is our secondary heating, which will be is a 12 volt immersion heater, which is actually mostly just going to be used as a solar dump load. On here we've got a manual level gauge, so that will go into the shower room and uh, we'll attach that to the wall so you can see how much hot water you've got left whilst you're in the shower. And then here we've just got a fairly simple tank empty sensor and tank full sensor and they'll be used to turn on and off. I think the tank empty sensor I can use to make sure it disconnects the uh, solar dump load because I don't want that heating up when there's no water in there. And the tank full one will be used uh, to turn off the solenoid to stop it filling with cold water. The next step is to now get some, uh, I've got some leftover 25mm PIR insulation and we're going to build an uh, insulated uh, enclosure all the way around this because it will just help it stay a lot hotter for longer. So to insulate this tank I'm cutting out these pieces, drilling holes for clearances and then I'm using just some just kind of um, grab adhesive just to on the side of the tank to hold them in place and then when I've finished it I'll go around all the sides with aluminium foil tape. Okay so here is the completed hot water tank. I have connected up a couple of electrical wires to the heating element and the fill solenoid just to test them. Um, seems okay although I'm not sure my heater is actually drawing anywhere near the sort of power it's supposed to but we'll have a look at that in the future so yeah that's the tank now I need to get it all into place in the van okay so here you can see I've got the hot water tank uh, just placed in position just been trying to route this this air hose is kind of tight but I think it's fitting similarly this hot water hose these two hoses are a little bit tight but they're gonna work okay so now I just need to cut this one here to put the pump in line and then I need to make a, a kind of support here to hold the tank in. So the hot water tank now has a frame around it holding it in place. It's fully restrained, not going anywhere. And I need to hook up, that's the hot water coming out and then I need the cold water going in but I also need to tee off so that I can then send the cold water up and over and into the bathroom, uh, into the kitchen area. So although it's looking slightly messy, it is now starting to come together. So we've got the cold water feed uh, coming in up through the part, the kind of bigger particle filter pump uh, accumulator and then it tees off, comes up to the shower point here. That's the external shower, and then tees, and then that's the isolator for the rest of the system. It would have been nice to put the isolator between the shower and the tee, but there's just not room, so uh, it's done that way, it's not the end of the world. And then that goes off, uh, it tees, that's the feed that goes into the hot water tank, and that tees off, and I now need to run up over the top and into the back of the kitchen. That's all I'm doing for now. I'm not doing the stuff into the back of the bathroom yet because I haven't built the bathroom. And all it'll be is a case of cutting it part the way along there and putting a tee in and then taking it out backwards. Then we've got the hot water that needs to go in so we'll have the hot water coming out of there, looping a couple of elbows to get it down to that bottom point there, through its pump and accumulator. Up here, I did manage to get the isolator in before the T, and then that's the shower, and then that hot water will follow the same path as the cold water. And again, at a later date, I'm gonna tee it off and go over to the bathroom so I can feed the shower and the sink. So I'm doing this whole lot out of um, 12 mil push fit John Guest fittings. So it's a kind of semi rigid pipe or rigid pipe. So I can do it one handed. And you cut it to length, a nice square edge using a decent pair of cutters. That's what these are. And then all you do is 
oops, focus, push it in, and that's it. That's locked, watertight, all done. If you want to release it, you have to push this, this ring here down. Pipe. Oh, it's hard to do one handed, I can't do it one handed. So, to release it, you push the end in, pull, and there we go, all comes apart. So, it does mean that should I need to get any of this stuff in the future, you can turn the water off and pull out, disconnect it at whichever joint is closest. So, should we ever have a failed pump, I'll probably just um, disconnect it that point there maybe this point down here undo the screws take the pumps and accumulators out fix it replace it whatever and off you go so here's the pipes running clipped up onto the extrusions and then you can see that blue pipe coming through let me just show you that's hooked up to the underside of the sink so I've just got to route that through trim it, put it into place. I also now need to add the uh, elbow and the red pipe for the hot water. So, just about to see, that's the pipe work in, that's all connected up to the taps, comes down, and then comes through here. It's probably not the neatest routing ever, but it, it does work, and it's all firmly attached goes through this as we described earlier and that's all about done from a kind of pipe work point of view the next big job is to um, wire everything up but I'm going to do that in a separate video because I'm actually going to put some relay controls in for the pumps uh, not because the pumps especially need relays at the minute but because we've got some further plans making use of some Arduinos and stuff like that that will uh, put some automated control into it and it makes sense then to have the relays because the Arduino can turn the relays on and off. Thanks again for watching, um, sorry there's been a little gap, it's going to be a bit more broken up now over the next few weeks because we're not going to have time to work on the van and then we're going away in it but we will try and get some footage whilst we're going away to show you what it's like. So if you like what you've seen, make sure you hit the like button. Please do subscribe and let us know in the comments if you've got any questions or any thoughts about what we've done here.